and welcome to the newest video today we're going to be talking about psychonauts 2 and really after 15 years of waiting for this game i can finally review it and i'm pretty excited we're going to talk about whether or not it holds up and if it feels like a true authentic sequel to the original game so let's talk about that in kind of my overall opinions if you don't know what it is psychonauts 2 is the newest game from double fine productions and it's a direct sequel to both psychonauts and psychonauts in the rhombus of ruin and this game takes place directly after in the rhombus of ruin where you play as raz and he's finally made his way to the psychonauts headquarters the mother lobe and from there you sit out on an adventure to find out a mole in the psychonauts and to uncover the mystery of the psychonauts first big adversary maligula as you continue to unravel that mystery you meet a ton of new characters um, throughout the Psychonauts universe from the new acting head of the Psychonauts to your fellow interns and even get to meet Raz's family in the game. This, the whole game is really brimming with personality, especially in its characters. All the characters are really well written and extremely likable, each with their own unique personality, style, and psychic abilities. Some of the new standout characters to me were all the different interns you get to meet. Each of them has a unique set of psychic powers from pyrokinesis to ice manipulation. And probably my favorite is um, Adam. He's a character who has a psychic yo-yo that he can manipulate. Doing some of the early missions at the beginning of the game really helps flesh out their characters and made them extremely enjoyable to just watch on screen. Aside from the interns, there are also some other characters within the Psychonauts you get to meet who get a lot more screen time as the plot progresses. I don't really want to spoil any of that because it's more late game in the plot, but I was generally surprised by a lot of the reveals in the late game, some of the things surrounding Raz's family mystery and a lot of the original psychonauts were pretty compelling to me i will say some of the trailers for the game do have some mid to late game character and area teases in them so if you really don't want any spoilers beyond the first few hours um i would say just try to watch spoiler free reviews like these and along with all the new characters there are some returning characters as well particularly like sasha nine and mia videlo and then lily all characters from the first game they're probably the characters that get the most screen time that came from the first game but they're mainly in the first couple hours of the game and don't really get a spotlight in the plot the further on you get this is somewhat disappointing for me because a lot of the returning characters i really did enjoy in the first game and they're not really integral to the plot until kind of the end of the game but i was honestly fine with that overall because you could still interact with them as you go throughout the open world and kind of hear their opinions on what's going on and can have more detailed conversations with them that you could really have in the original game which is really nice to kind of flesh out these characters i've known for you know a majority of my life and overall i think the characterization is pretty strong and that is really complemented well by the overworld and then the individual minds that raz explores in this game and the overworld i think is a lot more fleshed out in, than in the original game there are a few different areas you can explore and each one is brimming with collectibles pretty similar to the original game there are side cards supply chests which are new and a lot more and all these collectibles provide a really tangible benefit for raz either granting him spending currency or increasing his intern rank and that intern rank is very similar to what you had in the first game with the merit badge intern rank system and you increase your rank similarly by collecting figments side cards or side challenge markers the marked improvement in kind of the whole upgrade system is how you actually upgrade raz it's not as linear as it was in the first game in the first game whenever you upgraded you would get a power say every 15 ranks but in this game if with every rank you get up you get an ability point and you can spend those on any upgrades for your available psychic powers some of these upgrades are pretty simple like just adding an extra melee hit or side blast to your combo but some have even better perks like increasing damage or additional functionality to your psychic abilities like increased traversal are different ways to navigate around the mind and everything you do while exploring kind of has a direct benefit on raz's abilities which is really nice and aside from the systems that kind of returned from the original game, there's also a new pin system, which can provide a lot of various upgrades. To buy pins, you need to be a specific intern rank and have the right amount of Citanium. And Citanium can be found throughout the world in little pockets on the ground that are kind of telegraphed. And it can be a little tedious to find that, 
until you unlock a pin that doubles the amount of titanium drop. So I generally didn't use the pin system much in the game throughout the early and mid game, just because of the tedium that, that it would have been to continually farm for titanium. There were some pins that I got immediately, some pins that adjusted some of your abilities specifically. And one of those that I did get that I really did enjoy was one where you could actually use your telekinesis and pet all the animals in the game. Kind of a nice little cute feature they added and I thought it was really endearing. Aside from pins that were kind of more cosmetic in nature, there are some that can affect combat. One pin allows you to read enemies in place when you use your mental connection ability on that enemy. Overall, there definitely appears to be a lot more customization in this game than the first, and there doesn't seem to be necessarily a linear progression system in the upgrades. So you can kind of invest your points however you want and invest time into the pin system if you want as well. But none of these upgrades would really matter if the combat wasn't good. So I want to talk about that next. And I definitely think that the combat in this game is pretty good. Combat definitely, I don't think is the main focus of the Psychonaut games. Um, I definitely think the main focus is kind of platforming with some combat encounters added in to add variety. However, combat here flows really, really well. And there are a few returning powers from the original games and they've been tweaked to make combat a lot more fluid. Um, one example of this is the pyrokinesis ability. In Psychonauts 2, it's more of a stronger power. It can be used to deal area of effect damage and light multiple enemies on fire. And you can kind of make it a lot more flexible to how you play. So each of these enemies might have some specific weaknesses one of those might be the doubts who are really weak to pyrokinesis and they will set on fire easily and do damage and throw fl flammable slime on the ground which you can use to also light other enemies on fire there is also a lot more enemy variety this time around which makes combat more of a challenge i think one of the only downsides to the amount of enemy variety there is is the fact that you can only hotkey four psychic abilities at any time especially in later game fights this can cause you to have to open your menu a lot to rebind your powers mid fight. For example, if you need your pyrokinesis and then you have to switch to another power like telekinesis, it can kind of be a lot to deal with menu management wise in the middle of fights. I didn't really find this annoying because I kind of figured out my own rhythm to fighting, but I could definitely see this being annoying to some players. Uh, it did seem like there was a pretty good amount of time I had to spend man menu managing for powers and then using the in-game menus to track my progress. But that's overall my opinions of the combat and the last thing I kind of want to touch on is the open world and kind of the mental world that you see in the game. And I definitely think each of the worlds you explore in each of the mines is probably my favorite part of the game. Each one kind of has its own distinctive like art style and art direction but also has their own kind of gimmicks to them. And each one definitely is very high quality and there's not really a lot of repeated ideas. In each of the mental worlds, it kind of just builds on top of each other to build a really good cohesive experience. Some of my favorite worlds were shown in the trailer. One of the, specifically the one with Jack Black's character, the Psy King is probably my favorite level it's kind of a 1970s like hippie psychedelic vibe which was really really good and each of the levels continually impressed me with how inventive they were they were similar to the first game really a direct reflection of the mind of the character and we really got to explore a lot of different aspects to these characters in kind of a darker way than i'd seen in the original game some things that we kind of talked about are like addiction and um, like panic attacks and things like that which were handled pretty well overall. It handled very sensitive topics really well, which I really did like. So overall, I definitely think the worlds to this game really do complement the, the really good writing. I don't think there's a lot of games like Psychonauts that come out nowadays. So if this sounds really interesting to you, I definitely would recommend you try it and give it a try. If you are interested in the game, it is free on Game Pass. So you can have it for free included in your subscription if you want to play on PC, Xbox, or xCloud. I did play on all three. The footage in this review is all from a Twitch stream where I streamed it on my PC, but I did play a majority of the game on my Xbox and then also some in using xCloud. And I didn't really have any performance issues throughout the whole game. I did read on Steam, some people did have issues with performance. I didn't really have any of those. Your mileage may vary depending on the platform you play on. 
And overall, I do think this would be worth a $60 experience as well if you did have to pay for it. If you do like shopping platforming games, there's nothing really like this coming out anymore. And I definitely think that it is worth a purchase. And yeah, I think that's my overall reviews. I kind of gave you some pros, cons, and you know, some of my own opinions on the game. I hope you enjoyed any of the footage you watched as well. And I hope you enjoyed the overall review. And if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And for more content, I'm definitely gonna be reviewing some more games in the next few weeks. I know Back for Blood's coming out and a few others. So if you really wanna see what content is available on this channel, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.